And now let's go to Peter, Ber Peter Berens, a very important uh, uh, European architect. Also, in his own way, uh, kind of a father, in a way, of modernism. And uh, he, he built some important buildings. Um, Baron's house at the Darmstadt Artist Colony, the music room with Schneider's Grand Piano, 1901. Uh, it was the turn of the century. What can you do? Uh, it was still involvement with eclecticism, with history, with... Uh, uh, it was hard to escape uh, that, uh, that, uh, that past. The industrial clock designed by Berens for... I, this is a famous uh, a clock. Uh, you know, so simple, but, uh, you know, at that time, I mean, it was when 1909, so 102 years ago, 12 years ago. Um, he also built a great building for that company. We are going to see it. Uh, three versions of the famous water kettle. He designed uh, Peter or Peter Peter Perez designed also objects. Uh, here he is at his desk. <laughs> I, I, it amuses me every time I come across this picture with uh, the wrinkled, uh, you know, agitated uh, rug under his under his chair. Maybe he was uh, <laughs> caught by the photographer in a moment uh, of surprise uh, while he was looking at a book with I don't know what kind of pictures. <laughs> I I don't know. I, I'm just uh, fantasizing now, but. Um, <laughs> I like his desk. I mean, look at his desk. This is this was one of the most important architects in, in modernity. But look at his desk, you know, and uh, look at the rug. Drawing some drawings by uh, by uh, Peter Berens, a Berens drawing for a proposed skyscraper overlooking the canal locks at the the uh, Atlant Europa project. Uh, very modern, isn't it? Uh, I mean, you know, uh, you would say this is not, this is not the 19th century or early 20th century now, but it is. And this is a famous uh, building. Uh, actually, I, I, I notice now with despair that even the presentation on Peter Perens needs some improvements. Uh, this is a building by him that is uh, very famous and is present in most uh, histories of modern architecture. Uh, it's it's uh, an industrial building, but uh, it has force. It has uh, look at the interior and look look at the ceiling, the roof. Modernity, modernity is coming upon the world, and uh, Peter Barons welcomed welcomed it. All great architects were pioneers. They all anticipated something that was to come. So I think this idea to, to, to the, the architect as a pioneer, as someone who breaks a new ground, who is uh, in the front line of, 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 of profession, of the profession, but also of life, should be promoted. The architect as a pioneer. Someone who opens new new ways of, of seeing the world, uh, living the life, living life. I, I, I think it's important to have promoters of the new. Parents, Berlin, German shipbuilding exhibition at AEG, the pavilion. This one is um, temple-like. You would say it has nothing to do with you know, shipbuilding. Uh, but uh, there are influences from classicism in his architecture. This crematorium in particular makes you think of even Renaissance architecture, even uh, to an extent to uh, think of Alberti. It's a crematorium, but uh, uh, yes, the reference to the history of architecture is here for all to see. Now, what is this? I, this is a big, uh, um, a big uh, 
industrial building uh, and is, is still standing and I think is impressive. It is industrial, but it could be anything. It could be a university, a school, uh, you know, any institution could be housed in this building. I like it. It's, it's uh, you know, it's massive, but it has, you know, this stepped uh, superior part of the building and the robust uh, vertical uh, uh, parts. It, it, it shows uh, bigger, bigger. In Berlin. Yeah, this is a, I don't know what it is. It's like a technical school. Uh, it, it has some impressive uh, interiors. We are going to see, to, to see them. So you see, even here, he doesn't have the exuberance of Sullivan in ornaments, but, but there is a concern with, uh, with, with an ornamental work, even if it's of a geometrical order here as well. This one, the interior is unbelievable. I mean, look at this, you know, it's, it's just unbelievable. And you would say, well, why was there a need for this? Well, you know, it's like asking, what is the need for beauty? Uh, I, I think that this is a masterwork. It makes me think a little bit of uh, that housing project near Barcelona by uh, Taller de Arquitectura and Ricardo Bofil. There, there is not, is more, it's, it's, it's not so much, there, there isn't as, so much ornament, but here uh, it's, it's, it's a glorious interior. Look at this brickwork, you know, the joy he had, I'm sure, when he created the project for this. It was a creation, you know, and the other floor, the, the pavement of the floor is a different kind of aesthetics, but uh, everything is, is, is shows the joy of, of, of working uh, architecturally. Look at these bricks, how they come together. So, Peter Barons. And this is, uh, you know, uh, such an image uh, can only, I mean, It's, it's almost uh, psychedelic. Now, really, can we compare this with Lacaton and Vassal? I don't think we can, I'm sorry. Or this. Symmetry. A symmetry, which is uh, dogmatically often uh, um, rejected by a certain modernistic thought. But here we have perfect symmetry and uh, it's not a static symmetry. It's not a dead or deadly symmetry at all. Excellent work. The German embassy in St. Petersburg, also done by, by him. Now this looks... Uh, <laughs> you know, um, either excessively German or excess, excessively Russian. It was an embassy, but um, I don't know if it still is. And look at the, what is on top of the facade here, um, rather heavy. Uh, here you see it, you know, in close proximity, funny picture in a way. It disappeared. It's probably in a museum. What used to be there, the top on the top of the building, it's gone, as if by a miracle. Two houses, two houses by Peter Berens, his own house from 1901, 
uh, an interesting house actually. And you wonder, you know, what is this affectation here? But uh, on the other hand, why not? The purist might say, wait a minute, this is not modern. It's not. I mean, it's, it is and it isn't. But it is from 1901. The kitchen, it does have a kitchen. Quite, uh, quite well equipped, actually. And the entrance, again, an event, and the door, the entrance door is an event itself. I only hope that when you open the doors, you don't see that uh, uh, X with the two diagonals, like in, uh, in the case of uh, Lacaton and Vassal. Now I know Lacaton and Vassal, <laughs> as you can see, it obsesses me now. The, 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 there was another access, uh, but still I, I find it strange what they did there. Uh, but these doors, are, again, there is design here. There is uh, maybe even some kind of a symbolic, uh, um, um, uh, you know, uh, imaginary word uh, that, that uh, would, would have pleased uh, not Lacaton, but Lacan. One hundred twenty years ago, or so his own house. But they say that the shoemaker cannot make shoes for himself. It seems it's not always true. In this case, the architect was quite able to build for himself whatever B.R.K. Ingels might have said. He said that uh, architects have a hard time to build for themselves because uh, then they they would have no one to blame but themselves if the, if the, if the work is a failure. But look, uh, Peter Behrens had no problem to build for himself. The first modernist house from 1926, um, what can we say? It is modernistic, yes. Britain's first white concrete box or exercise in modernity, new ways in Northampton by Peter. Peter, I guess we should pronounce his name. He was German and not uh, uh, English. Peter uh, Barons. This was built in England. Indeed, different from the previous one house. Modernity is knocking at the door. 1926, well, two years later, Le Corbusier built Villa Savoie. But this kind of interior, I'm absolutely sure Le Corbusier would have strongly rejected. As a designer, we are approaching the end of this presentation. It should have been better. And, and uh, if I do this next year, I will, I, I have to, I have to reduce. We do both the presentation on Sullivan and, and Peter Barras. As a designer, he designed many, many, uh, you know, industrial objects. He was an, also an industrial designer, as you can see, Barras as industrial designer. I have a fan actually, uh, which I bought in a, in a Salvation Army store in the States, very similar to this one. It still works. Um, so what can we say? You know, these objects were designed by him. They are, they are not so modern any longer for us, but for the time when he built them, uh, this chair here though is, uh, I, I would not have thought this was by him. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised, but it's probably by him. Everything else here is by him. Um, Yes, architects love to design everything. So uh, yeah, the, this is a fine piece. And as I said, mine is very similar to this one. I, um, and I, what I like is that it still works. Anyway, look at this. <laughs> I don't even know what it is, but whatever it is, it looks interesting and engaging, it's provocative. 
uh, two pieces, the same thing, but I don't know what it is. This was the, the company that he also built that uh, large uh, industrial building that I, I, uh, we saw uh, previously. AEG, uh, I, I should have known what these initials mean. And here is a poster. I think he did a poster as well. The enlightenment coming from light, electrical light, that is. Um, it's a lamp, it's a lamp. And the chair. And another chair. I like this chair, you know, it's, it's gracious. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's whimsical a little bit, it is gracious, yes. Very nice chair, really. Design is not about decorating functional forms. It is about creating forms that accord with the character of the object and that show new technologies to advantage. That's what he said. And uh, it's true that if you reflect on the work of Sullivan, Sullivan probably would have said the same thing, that those ornaments were not really about decorating functional forms, but that they were born uh, know, from inside out in a way that they were growing somehow from the building. Now, this may, might not sound very rational or logical. It might not be a way to make someone understand how to design. But one thing is for sure, decoration or ornament, when it happens, it has to be done uh, convincingly, con convincingly and, and, and uh, subtly at the same time, and uh, because there is a danger indeed, and this is the reason why modernism banished uh, decoration for so long and ornament. And it could become tiring, even sometimes in the case of Sullivan, it became tiring. So we have to be careful how we use it, but I think it's important. It's important to, to bring sensitivity to a box. And not just, it depends. Sometimes you could leave it as a, some kind of a manifesto, you know, a, a raw box. That is also possible. But uh, we do need sensitivity. We do need emotion. And so in accord, in accordance with the character of the object or with the character of, of the building, how you do that is not easy to, to it depends, but if you understand the, the core substance of a building, we talk now about the buildings or an object, uh, an industrial object, then you can decorate it or you can bring ornaments to it without appearing that you are doing an injustice to it. Um, I'm not sure I clarified anything through my words now. Uh, here are some posters by... Uh, by this prolific uh, architect and designer. A von Haus Verens of the, unfortunately, I don't know German, 1901. This is uh, his own house. But you see even the, the, the whatever this is, a poster or, uh, you know, the cover of a book on, on, on the house itself doesn't give up uh, on, 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 on ornaments. It was difficult, you know, 120 years ago or so, or so without, uh, without a certain uh, participation of what we call ornament. We saw this one. Uh, this one is not very easy to, to, to look at because of the resolution, sorry. And uh, the interior, what can we say? It's rather busy, no, for a modernist accustomed to IKEA uh, furnitures. His own house, yes. The man is gone, but the building is still uh, is still alive. Better Baron's house.
sorry about these pictures, really. I have to do another presentation about this. Um, the bourgeois dream, no, to have the piano in, in the living room or in, in the music room or whatever is. Uh, Another villa in Saarbrücken, uh, this one, a large one, um, modernistic, but not totally. Look at the parapet of the balconies. On the other hand, the interior is resolutely modern. Maybe also because of the, the armchairs, which are, you know, shiningly modern. Better balance. Of course, there were here interventions, it's clear. This is, uh, um, it might not even be his work, uh, even in, um, I think that there were clear interventions here. A building in time suffers changes. This is the crematorium which we saw. I don't know why why I show distinctly in two phases the same building. Um, the influence of history, a picture from the inside, you know, rather sad. You know, it's a crematorium, and better not think about it. This is the back of the building and uh, interesting uh, change in a way, aesthetically, a rough stone. Maybe it was done intentionally, uh, as, you know, the, two, the two faces of the building. I don't know what this, I'm a little bit confused. I think there are, as the, buildings here or something like this. This is how it was when it was built, but uh, things change. Now this dog is, uh, I don't know exactly what it wants to do, to advance towards me or towards us in a rather unfriendly way, it looks like it. And this is the plan. An interesting plan, in a way. A crematorium. A monument to death. We saw this. Alami, I love you, Alami. Alami, mon amour. Uh, Saw this before. I don't know. Saw this here. This one we saw, uh, but we didn't see pictures from from. Uh, it's strange this presentation. I should have looked at it again. I made it a while ago, and we saw this one. This is the for that company that also produced those uh, industrial designs that he created, and uh, yeah, uh, famous industrial building by Peter Berens.
no, I, I definitely have to redo this uh, this presentation. I'm sorry, I'm very unhappy with it, and I apologize. This one, another villa that you didn't see. Uh, what can we say? It's modern, but not totally. We love to play with a square and a circle. We saw it also in that building, they were somewhat inspired by uh, maybe even Alberti. But this stair is not truly in, in that spirit at all. And he loved rough stone, but not only rough stone. So like in that crematorium, you see in a way the two sides of better barons. He wanted to have rawness and he wanted to have the smooth walls or whitish walls. Maybe the most remarkable thing about this building is this gate here in terms of design. I don't know why this is in Dusseldorf, another building. I don't know if it still exists. Uh, some of these buildings were destroyed during the Second World War. I guess it, it, it still exists. It's here. Dusseldorf. Not, not a lot of exuberance here, well, we have to confess. A rather heavy architecture, dark and gloomy for my taste, or maybe I am in a gloomy, gloomy mode. Anyway, um, As you know, large buildings with a sloping roof are often problematic. You know, the, the bigger the building, the more pro problematic a sloping roof is. If it's not divided into smaller parts like this, is, is, it can be heavy. We saw this one. I don't understand what I, why I showed. Anyway, here the picture is clearer and rather, I mean, even more amusing. You know, the relationship between art and life, you know, as you look at all these proud men and then the, the majestic uh, uh, statues uh, above them. This was above the building in St. Petersburg, and then we saw that uh, they vanished, they went somewhere, I don't know where, maybe in Putin's uh, castle or garden. <laughs> Who knows? The mysteries of history. But this used to be the German embassy in St. Petersburg. Human vanity, of course. Those huge horses and these, those giant human beings there. I mean, men, M E N. We saw this one. Another, what? It's like I'm going, it's a deja vu, I'm going backwards. Very strange. I'm sorry. I apologize for this presentation. This very rarely happens to me. I feel embarrassed. It, it is as if I and I know what it is. In a certain uh, at a certain time, I didn't do chronological presentations, and this was done at that time. Lately, I became wiser to do it chronologically. But here, I didn't do it chronologically, so now I pay the price. Um, what can we say? Round columns and, uh, you know, courtyards and uh, rather, I don't know. I am beginning not to like these buildings, actually. Um, but they are still by Peter Behrens. And uh, but the plants still grow in the courtyards. 
Uh, we saw this one, not this one, but it's the same, the same company, AEG in Berlin, um, another building, God, uh, it probably doesn't exist. It's gone in the, in the, in the world. And this is in Köln. God, he built too much, really. Peter Barras, please, let's, let's, let's end this presentation. Or maybe I'm tired after the two other presentations not to speak about uh, the intermezzo with Lakaton and Vassar. This is a housing complex in Berlin. Uh, welcome to modernity, but uh, you know, some, some kind of a social housing, I would say. Again, a, no, this one we saw, I'm not going to, I'm not going, sorry, we saw this, sorry, I apologize, I apologize. Well, not all pictures you saw, but in essence you saw, why are they not centralized? Uh, yeah, yeah, I should have looked through this uh, presentation. I'm very unhappy with it. Um, I have to bring in some uh, temperamental uh, verb, otherwise uh, my reputation as a good uh, presenter of, uh, on architecture will be totally, uh, totally damaged. Ah, uh, come on, come on, Barons, please. What am I going? It's like it never ends. I go back. Yes, we didn't see this house. Uh, it's, yes, it's modernistic, it's true, it's fine, it's a good building, but uh, ah, this was done at the Stuttgart Weissenhof in 1927, where uh, Le Corbusier showed uh, his talent, and Miss van der Rohe, and Hugo Herring, and uh, Hans Scharoun, and so on. This was done by Peter Behrens. Okay, 1927, Stuttgart, a colony of uh, innovative houses by innovative architects. Or I shouldn't say innovative architects because a good architect is by definition innovative um, or should be. Anyway, this is the plan. Another villa, my God, uh, modernistic also. What year? 1929, 1931. Um, bad resolution, horizontal lines, modernism. Yes, of course, he, he was influenced perhaps from the younger ones, like Le Corbusier, a synagogue in Germany. I don't know where this is. It's not in Germany. Interesting work, though. I should, I should have looked more carefully into this. Uh, but maybe it's damaged by interventions, or I don't know. So the building on the left is by him. Um, Destitution. Tabak fabric, 1925. Huge work. I, all, all of these things were built by him, but they were refurbished. And uh, Uh, here is a problem with this building. I didn't quite understand that. I think this is what he built. But there is another one with the same name, and that's why the confusion. Uh, in Berlin, former East Berlin, now Berlin, Berlin. With new interventions of changes. Oh, this will never end. I'm obviously tired, but it's an interesting house. 1932, 1933. Uh, not much to see. I mean, maybe much to see, but in, in, in the pictures I have, um, besides the splendor of nature. And the plan, kind of interesting. A big house, though. Very interesting plan. Rather cryptical. What is this? Uh, a church. Friedens Kirche in Linz. He built a lot better balance, but uh, I don't know. I, I think it's something wrong with me. I, I'm tired and I'm impatient and I want to, I want this presentation to end. And now I see no virtues in this work. Sorry, Peter Barans, it's not your mistake, this is mine. The problem is with me. 
I, I don't find you very interesting in these last words. Sorry, uh, I'm done. I, 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 what can I say? You are very patient with me. The, 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 the eight people still here.